Welcome to Type-Z Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna be unboxing and checking out the Pixio PX279 Prime. If at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's get into this. Opening up the box. This is a 240 hertz 1080p budget monitor that's in that like mid 200s, low 200s price points, depending on the day and the sale, but let's get this open. A pretty light box overall. That comes out nice and easily. All right, so we have the stand here, which is solid metal. I think we've seen this stand before from Pixio, but yeah, this is all, it's all metal. So that's super premium, that's super nice. Then we've got the power brick. So you do have an external power supply, but the brick isn't too big. A bag of cables, including your power cord for the other end of that power supply and a display port cable. But let's get to the panel itself and the stand, which it does come pre-attached, which is pretty nice. You can see that all comes pre-attached. Let's pull that off. Then also in the cable box, we have this bag of screws, just two screws, but that's what we're gonna use to put the stand together. All right, we got our screwdriver. I'm gonna line this stand up. Looks like we can't do it while this is just laying flat. So let's try to, let's try to do this a little bit. So there we go, that's lined up. And then we just screw it in. Not quite as easy as a thumb screw, but not too big of a deal. And the other one, and there we go. Let's take this panel out of the box. Overall, some specs and a cool little sheet. Warranty, three-year warranty, that's kind of cool. So right away, the panel looks nice. We have some nice glossy accents down here. Appears to be pretty dang thin bezels, nice metal stand. The stand is also all metal right here, so that's awesome. Also looks like a clip-in stand, which is really, really nice. You push that up. Yeah, so this just clips in and out. We can also see the vase mounting locations, four screws right there. The panel is actually quite heavy itself. And then that's how it locks right back in. Let's go over ports while it's up here. We've got our DC in USB, which is pretty cool, but it looks like there's no upstream port. So that's probably just power. Then we've got a HDMI 2.0 and then two DisplayPort 1.4s up to 240 Hertz on all of these, including the HDMI, which is awesome. As for the stand, when it's on your desk, this looks really, really, really nice and clean and it doesn't take up that much space. You can see here, it is sitting on my larger style mouse pad, but not too big of a deal. For the adjustments, no height here, just tilt. And honestly, not that much of tilt. So I hope that you like the height. If it's a normal desk, you're gonna be okay, but just tilt here. That's where they're saving a little bit of money, but they do give you metal in the stand. So that's interesting. But let's get this thing hooked up on the desk. We're gonna do an initial test, gaming impressions, and a ghosting test. All right guys, now it's set up on the desk. Let's use the single joystick around the bottom there to turn it on. There's a little indicator light. Just from initial impressions of looking at the black screen, this matte finish, definitely still a matte finish, but it doesn't look super bad. Does this not have auto? All right, so let's select. Display port one. First impressions, it's a little dim, but let's go into the menu system. Let's first go in here. It is at 1920 by 1080. And you see we're only doing 60 Hertz. So let's bump that up to its full 240 Hertz. All right, now here in NVIDIA control panel, it's nice and quick and snappy. Initial impressions is, I'm getting some weirdness on the screen here on a white screen. I can almost see lines going like this. Um, it's kind of faint when you go to the side, it's much more noticeable. So that's something the weird that we're going to have to check out. That's probably maybe the backlight, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right. So let's go in here, see if we can output 10 bits of color and it can 10 bits of color. It's definitely nice and smooth as you expect for 240 Hertz. Pixelization is apparent. This is a 27 inch panel at 1080p. It's definitely going to be there. The benefit is if you don't have as powerful as a rig, you're going to be able to push that full 240 frames, most likely with something that's not super high end, which is really nice. The bezels are nice and thin and kind of squared off with a little bit of rounding. It looks very attractive. It looks good. It doesn't look like a budget monitor from its external. It looks really nice. All right, let's go to the menu system. This is the pretty typical menu system for Pixio. It's definitely not the worst in the industry, but it's not amazing either, but pretty easy to find the brightness. And that brightened it up a little bit. I'm not sure if it's 400 nits or not. That's what it was rated at. We'll have to see. It is difficult because we're in a bright room. So I'm not entirely sure. I also just came from that Alienware OLED uh, so I'm not exactly sure, but it's decently, it's decently bright for sure. There's some different presets here, movie, photo, RTS, FPS one, FPS two, and then standard and user. We're going to leave it in user. Let's go down into color. We have different color temperatures. We have normal, cool, warm, sRGB, and again, user. We're going to go up here and leave it 
in, we're gonna leave it in user actually. We're gonna go to gamma, set a 2.2. We'll see if that's correct in the full review coming in a few days, so subscribe below if you wanna see that. In the gaming setting, we have free sync. We're gonna turn that on. We then have our overdrive settings, which is essentially our ghosting settings. Uh, game assist, like crosshair and FPS counter, that's pretty cool to have on here. Then we have HDR, DCR, and MPRT. This is going to be like a motion blur reduction setting. Then we have our different inputs and it says that we have auto select so that's cool you have audio firmware updates a lot of different things and then it looks like we have custom profiles which is really cool that we can set so that is it looks like it's version two of this pixio menu system uh, but yeah overall decent pretty easy to find everything doesn't look very high end but that's what we expect but with that let's get in game and see how this thing does all right guys jumping right in game uh initially brightness is definitely good it's nice and snappy, 240 hertz for this price point. Uh, right away, it looks pretty good. Colors look fairly accurate. Not anything crazy far off, just visually. Obviously, that's gonna be tested with a colorometer. Black levels are obviously nothing insane as we expect. Overall, it feels great as 240 hertz always does. And it's an IPS panel. It's like, there's most likely not gonna be very many problems. This is a proven technology. Uh, if you're not super versed, in what you want in a panel, I always recommend go for an IPS. These things are gonna last 15 years, plus 250 bucks for this. In this period of time is really, really awesome that that's even possible because just five years ago, this would have been $1,000 or more. So that's pretty wild. But yeah, the gameplay is exactly what you expect from an IPS. Not great black levels, obviously, but for the price, we have really, really good looking colors here. And brightness is also pretty decent. Ooh, yeah, a really enjoyable monitor to game on, especially if you're at the distance that I am currently at, which is a little bit more than an arm's length away, probably four inches more than an arm's length away. Uh, in game, you don't really, really notice as much of that pixelation unless you start looking at the text, then you can see a little bit from my distance. It really does depend on how close or far away you sit from your monitor. If you do sit closer, 1080p at the screen size isn't the best. So as you can see, when we go from these darker spots, not black, black, obviously because it's an IPS, but we look up to the bright up here and it's nice and bright. Like it, it definitely gets decently bright. Even though this is a dark map, there is some reflection that I'm getting from my window over there. Uh, but this is a very brightly lit room for video, obviously. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's exactly what I expected. You really, it's pretty hard to go wrong with an IPS panel with no frills on it, but it's 240 Hertz. The ghost thing looks pretty good here as I expected. Uh, but let's check it anyway. And again, remember, I'm gonna be going through testing this thing in depth and then giving you a full review in about five to seven days. All right, guys, looking at the ghosting here is exactly what I expect. There's a small, small trail across the board, but it's very, very small. And we are in one of the lowest overdrive settings. So let's go in here, go into gaming setup, go into overdrive. We're currently at low. Let's go to middle, select that. Looks like it brought it down a little bit. Yes, definitely brought it down a little bit. And then let's try high. Let's pray that there's no overshoot here. Yeah, there's some overshoot. Not super, super bad overshoot, but it looks like just visually uh, the middle is probably gonna be the best one. I'm not seeing any overshoot, just a very, very, very small trail uh, of your standard ghosting. We're now trying this at double the speed and it does actually show we have some overshoot here. So in those faster whips in the middle setting, looks like that's where you're gonna see overshoot, which is something I really, really don't like. When you do fast whips and you start to see overshoot, probably not it. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess here that low is probably gonna be our best setting. We're gonna go into low. Yeah, and looks like once we're in low, I'm not seeing any overshoot here. A trail, but a very, very small trail with ghosting. Definitely not the best I've ever seen on an IEPS, far from it. We've seen basically crystal clear displays that look almost like OLEDs uh, on IPS panels, but this is just not going to be an issue. Once you get to this level on, it's really, really not an issue, especially if you're in this price point for a 240 hertz, 1080p, 27 inch panel that is under 250 bucks most of the time, this is a great deal. I mean, there's not really much that goes into these monitors. There's not a whole lot that's special about them, but they do the main point really, really well, which is good colors, good brightness, and a great refresh rate, and a panel that's never gonna have burn in and will last you 15 years. I mean, I'm still gonna go through and test it and we'll see how the colors look after the colorometer test, but yeah, I mean, this looks great. If you wanna check it out before the review, Amazon links below, but if you're not subscribed, subscribe below for the full review coming in a few days, but this is Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.